What's up viewers? I have a completely wacky idea for a game. Stay tuned if you want to know what it is. Welcome to my channel Bytheation. Here you can follow my journey on building a game with close to zero experience. And you will hands down get front row seats to what is probably my 30 year life crisis. The game is about creating species in a sandbox-like world, while you try to maintain a balanced and working ecosystem. Nature can be fragile and robust at the same time, and I hope to gamify this a bit with a programming twist. At its core, the game is sort of a mix between a coding game, such as Battlesnake, where you write your own code for how the snake moves, and a video with Sebastian Leg about how he's balancing an ecosystem. I find nature to be quite interesting and I think the challenge of tampering with an ecosystem will be a fun game mechanic for players. Balancing an ecosystem is hard. In its essence, and this is very simplified, it boils down to this. A rabbit needs greens in order to survive. And if the rabbits become twice as many, then we would need twice the amount of greens to balance the scale. Let's ignore the greens for a moment and instead explore what happens when the real predators enter the playing field. If the population of the predators gets out of hand, maybe because the predators catches and kill the rabbits too easily, then the population of the rabbits plunges. If this happens too quickly, there will be too many predators alive long enough to hunt the rabbits to extinction. And when this happens, well, it's just a matter of time before, before the predators have nothing to eat and go extinct themselves. If everything works well, then the predators will start having trouble finding food due to the low population of the rabbits, causing the predator population to decline, giving a breathing room for the rabbits to start multiplying again. And the cycle will continue. This will be one of the many challenges when creating and adding a creature to your ecosystem. When you create creatures, or rather a species of creatures, in the game, you write real code to describe how they behave in the world. Not in some nasty made-up language, but in a programming language such as JavaScript or Python, and hopefully many more to come. The current working title of the game is Life Code. What do you think about the name? Please leave a comment down below. This is what the game looks like right now. Might not look like much, but it took me two months to make this. I spent the majority of time learning all the new skills I needed. So what I do have is this simple world where creatures move around and bump into each other. And also have a decent camera control. Most of what you see here is basically placeholders and a playground for me to experiment with the game. Because I want the game to be available to everybody, I'm gonna run the game in your browser. What, what, what? I want the game to run in the browser because I want it to be super easy for people to start playing the game. It should be possible to play the game on any computer without having to install anything. And what's even better, it will be even easier to share a link to someone. Someone at school, a colleague or a friend. In most coding games, the code you write doesn't actually run on your own machine. But for this game, it's essential that it does. I will not afford to host all the bottomless compute this game needs when simulating I don't know how many creatures. It will of course be a challenge for the game to run in the browser. But who doesn't like a good old fashioned challenge? Follow my channel to see if I break it no! or make it. Yeah! The core and the majority of the game will be free for people to play around with. There will however be an option to pay for some extra content, such as aesthetics for the creatures, new worlds and something I'm really excited about, multiplayer. But that's far far in the future. Man, man, I have a lot of things gone wrong at times. It took me ages to understand Quartirneons. Quartirne... Quartirneon. Quart... Quaternion, 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 Quaternion. This spinning Christmas tree right here serves as a constant reminder that algebra in school actually meant something. 
in programming or maybe specifically game dev, you might program something for a very long, long time and it just works. I love those moments. Too bad they don't happen that often. I downloaded this sweet ass fox, but I need more creatures, so I'll be making my own from now on. I'm man enough to admit when I'm afraid of something, and that something is Blender. That is a monstrosity of a program. But after some time I managed to get myself my very own animated raccoon. I loaded it into the game just to be terrified of my own creation. I guess it's good that I don't sleep that much. I have a long way to go, but it's really fun learning as I go along. I mentioned that I had close to zero experience, and that's true, I've never made a game before. I do have a programming background, but I decided to do this game in Rust, more on that later. Unfortunately I don't know Rust either. To sum up, in order to become a successful indie dev, you need a particular set of skills. You need to be able to create 3D content, you need to be able to create art, do marketing, and obviously coding, and much much more. I am totally lacking that, but I will learn that shit. This game, as we all know, is gonna be epic. It basically writes itself. When I started coding on this game, I needed to learn Rust and Bevy, which is the game engine I'm using. Bevy is a bit different compared to Unity and Unreal. It doesn't really have an editor and it's as newborn as they get. The reason I chose Rust and Bevy to do this boils down to these four points. First one, I need the code to compile to Wasm, which can run in your browser. This is the most important one. And two, I wanted to use Rust in C instead of C++. Both can compile to Wasm, but I was really interested in Rust at the time. Even though Unity can be used to build games for the web, I was unsure if it would have the flexibility I needed because I'm making this very unusual game which includes executing code as part of the game loop. Four. In Rust there aren't that many game engines available and I have heard about this bevy and it also compiles the wasm and people seem to like it. My rough sketch of the different game states looks a bit like this. This is the beginning of the game, you choose between sandbox or story mode. I'll talk about story mode some other time, but let's focus on the sandbox play mode. You click on it, you will probably be taken to the creature creation. And here you will be able to preview how your creature looks like. You can configure the appearance. This will not affect the creature in the game that much, it will just affect the appearance. And to the right you will configure your creature. Maybe you will change what it eats, how fast it runs, how fast it grows, and many other qualities. The idea here is that there will always be a compromise when choosing these qualities. Having a fast creature will maybe affect energy consumption, defense, and belly size. And up in the top left corner you see this really ugly categories of windows. Here we are at the creature state. But if you were to press tab, that's my idea at least, taking a bit inspiration from Blender here, you would swap into the next state, which is code. So here you will code your creature, how it behaves. You will use the selected one. And you will have a testing ground, a small world where you can reset the world all the time. And you can select which kind of world you want to be simulated in. And here to the right, you have the code. So you will, you will probably get a function with a lot of inputs and then you will ex be expected to give a certain output. For example, where it's headed, if it's eating and so on. I will go into that in another video. And the final game state will be the world one, it's right here. So here you would see the entire world. You can zoom around, click on different species and you will get an info selection box here and some statistics, maybe some graphs on how the population is going and so on. And this would be the main game. You would toggle between these three states. I'm working on the plant life right now. I want many different species of plants to compete for the same energy. I'm using a grid-like structure to simulate the plant life and the plant spread. So here you can see the red indicating a high value and I can toggle between different species. It's a bit hard to see in here, but this area is red and this area is red. 
I'm going to visualize this later with 3D models, but the grid will always serve as the basis of how much plant life there is of a certain species in that cell. The creatures will affect the environment they live in. For example, if a certain species of creature eats too much of a certain plant, that plant might go extinct, making room for other plants to grow. And when they grow, the conditions for the ecosystem change, and so might the balance. This is a fun aspect of the game, and the players will have to keep this in mind when they write the creature's life code. Bye for now, and if you're curious, please subscribe, and also leave a comment in the comment section if you have any help or advice. I'll need it.